It is a warm welcome to you and thank you for choosing Once a Warrior. I'm Monty Beatham, joined by a fellow hooker, a man who played 86 times for the club, debuting in 2012. Nathan Friend, Friendy, how are you, man? Thanks for joining me. Mate, it's a, it's a pleasure, Mont. Um, glad to be aired back over in NZ. Um, the big C has kept us away. We booked tickets to uh, come over a couple of years ago and uh, it was a month before it all kicked in and, yeah, we uh, still got the fares there, so we'll have to use them up shortly. Um, I know you're in the beautiful Queensland. I'm not too sure where, so tell us where you are and also what are you doing these days because you're not tackling things, man. <laughs> I can't give too much away once, but I'm, I'm on the beautiful Gold Coast. Um, yeah, just uh, a few K away from the beach, so life is good. Um, not complaining, but, uh, yeah, look, I... I'm service and warranty supervisor for Metricon Homes here. Um, I take care of all northern New South Wales. My father-in-law's got a couple Toyota dealerships um, out west of Queensland, so I take care of his finance and insurance for him um, at night time for the farmers. All right, Friendy, let's uh, take a look at your career. This is Friend, and Friend wins the battle! And then off goes Friend. He's like a little rabbit. Friend has decided to kick. Nathan Friend, where's he pulled that from? Friend, rounding himself, Nathan Friend. Friend, Friend through the middle, up the middle, Nathan Friend, the veteran. Nathan Friend, he's as tough as a $2 oh. steak. Friend, runs himself. Friendy, uh, you watch that back. Uh, how do you feel? You got a smile on your face. <laughs> I didn't know I was so fast, Monty. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the people around me are a little bit slow and a little bit, a little bit tired. But uh, no, it was uh, good to relive, mate. Um, I might have to save that and uh, show the boys because there's not too many of Nathan Friend scoring tries on YouTube. But, I have searched and tried to show them, but yeah, nothing really appears, so. July the 12th, 2015, I was against the Storm, your beloved Storm, uh, where you came up with an, an amazing pass and one that went viral around the world. Talk me through that, man. And, and what were you doing chasing a, a kick, a midfield kick? Uh, and, you know, because you're not normally that aerial type of player. Well, I didn't think I was either. Um, I guess the ball went across the park, mate, and... I was probably a little, little tired, under fatigue, and uh, I didn't get there for the last. And I thought I'd hang around the middle, um, tried to hide there, but I seen the ball go up, mate, and the competitive spirit to so get through and give it a go. And you know, I'm amazed how the ball's just stuck, and then you know what was to transpire after it. You know, that, that kind of made it. You know, I was lucky just to get the ball away and Sammy to be standing right behind me. But was there any thought of self-preservation because you got into a, a pretty awkward position yeah look I was trying to show the wingers what they need to do and that's kind of focus on the ball mate and just have the eyes of the ball and I did that and uh, you know what transpired was just as you say it it, uh, it went around the world we had friends in Germany at the time and they they messaged me uh, saying was that you um, <laughs> But, you know, it was a, it's pretty crazy to think that uh, at the time of the event, um, Kelly, my wife, she went to the toilet just uh, going down the stairs of the stadium uh, as it all happened. And by the time she got back, her parents were actually over watching the game. And uh, the father in law showed her on YouTube what had happened uh, 10 minutes later. So, yeah, it's. It's amazing with the media and everything these days, how, uh, how quick it all happened. Now, let's get into it, mate. And 2011 was one of the, the big years in the club's history in terms of three teams in the grand final. Uh, how, how did you first get word that they wanted to sign you and how did that unfold? I went in, oh, at the end of 2010, I went in, I had a, uh, a shoulder rico and um, they had to take my collarbone and move it across and put some screws in it to stop it from popping out. And uh, I did the whole off season in recovery and uh, come back for round two of 2011. 
And uh, I said to the club, Doc, it just doesn't feel right, you know. Um, and so we went in a couple of weeks later and had a scan and the uh, piece of bone had um, worn away and uh, there was just a couple of screws sitting there. So um, I had the, the whole of 2011 um, just to watch watch the game, but uh, Ivan Cleary obviously got in contact at the start of 2011 and uh thought uh, he saw I would be a great fit for the Warriors. Um, you know, Ivan seemed like a really great guy and, um, you know, thought we'd sign and, you know, it just so happened that you boys, as you say, were, were in the grand final in 2011 and I thought, you know, how good just to uh, join in. Hopefully uh, we can go one better the year after and, you know, I get over there and two weeks later uh, Gus Gould takes Ivan and... Uh, yeah, went through a few coaches after that. Okay, can we just go through and just um, break down the, the three coaches that you had in four years? I mean, uh, that's that's never a fun task because you're just getting used to one coach and then uh, obviously another one takes over. Uh, Bluey McKinnon. Yeah, so I guess Bluey got the job and he, he was really successful with the Kiwis um, beforehand. Um, so, you know, what he, what he would do within camp, uh, it's a little bit different to a... A 12-month season um, you've got to periodize things and you know you probably got to change your game plan a little bit and you know what he threw threw out just you know just didn't work or didn't land on us how how you know how we required um, but you know great guy and Matty Elliott was um, he was very difficult to, to get a handle on um, we'd ask him a question but um, we wouldn't always get the answer. Uh, he'd he'd kind of jump around it, and we'd, you know, we'd leave a, a meeting, and we'd just be looking at each other, going, "What just went on?" You know. So, we, 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 yeah, it was a it's a little bit difficult. Um, and as a player, like I said, you kind of want your leader to uh, be clear and precise, and you know, have those measurable goals for you, and. Um, yeah, just don't think it was there. Mm. Um, and then Andy McFadden kind of took over. He was, you know, under Matty and, you know, he did his best. Um, but as a as a leader, I think you've got to be honest and uh, with your players to, to earn respect and get everything out of them. And I just, I think he lacked there a little bit as well. Um, you know, I certainly had a great time under the coaches that I had, it's just the success probably just wasn't there mm. that I was hoping for. You know, we were we were thereabouts, but we just weren't that next level, unfortunately. So, so Friendy, when you when you look at um, mm -hmm. the cultures of both clubs, you spent some time at Melbourne, you spent some time at the Warriors. Uh, what could we have picked up, or what could we do better as a club? Well, I guess uh, first and foremost is is the leader at the top, uh, like Craig Bellamy. Um, you know, he's the first man there, and he's the last man to leave. And that would be six in the morning and six at night. So I guess we had something like that. And um, just the boys' desire to train just to do the extras. Uh, probably didn't see that in New Zealand. You know, we'd be leaving a massage at, uh, you know, 7.30 at night in, in Melbourne. And, you know, we'd be training all day. You know, you'd, you'd have it a, a half an hour off for lunch. And so it was, it was full on and... A lot of the results come from muscle memory and putting in the hard work. That's as simple as it is, you know. You know, I'd, I'd also, having been at clubs that were, you know, successful and you know, had the drive myself, I always wanted to bring the individuals through, um, just like myself, and I didn't want them to, you know, leave opportunities behind, like, um, you know, you'd hate for them to have a season and probably not put their best foot forward and, and miss out on, you know, reaching the highs that they probably could. And a lot of the kids over there, you know, as you know, have got the ability. They just need someone there just to stoke their fire a little bit. Mm. When we think about you, you're already talking about, obviously, the shoulder and how um, the bone was uh, almost non-existent and you had screws in galore. Uh, mate, you're not, you're not a big man. Um, how was it possible to do what you did week in, week out and turn up the following week? Because there's times I saw you after the game, you look like you're in a mess. But sure enough, the next week you turned up and you did the same thing again. Talk to me about that psyche. 
Um, I guess it starts all three juniors, mate. Um, you know, always was the uh, the smallest guy, and um, I come through juniors, and you know, my team used to get beaten fifty or sixty points a week, so every week, and it kind of improved my tackling technique. Um, you know, obviously, I needed to change a little bit when uh, when I grew older, and you know, the jujitsu training and all that kind of stuff certainly assisted. Um, you know, so, but you know. As, you can't, um, I guess you can't teach uh, the mentality, mate, of just getting in the road of people. Um, if an individual doesn't want to do that, it doesn't matter how good his technique is or how good of an individual ability he has, you, you're probably not going to get the best out of him. Mm. So I guess I was fortunate that, uh, you yeah, know, my old man showed me a lot of tough love and um, toughened me up. And every time I got in the car, it was like, why didn't you do this or do that? You know, I could have a good game. But, you know, it was always... <laughs> You know, don't settle. Don't did you have a, did you have a uh, Samoan you know, father as well, Friendy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and God love him. You know, it was uh, the best upbringing I had, and you know, I looked up to the man, and I'm very fortunate. But mate, I I got to 17, 18 years of age, and mm. I thought, oh yeah, maybe my time's gone. But uh, you know, the mentality was just to keep enjoying my footy, um, and I. Kept laying bricks, mate. You know, I, I got my apprenticeship as a bricklayer, and I think that's another another thing that really assisted me in um, continuing my rugby league uh, further on in my career. Is I just knew how hard it was to, you know, get up at five thirty and go lay bricks till two, and mm. then hop in the car and drive to Brisbane for an hour and a half and train, and then get home at ten thirty at night. You know, everything you could do just to get a position uh, in the team. And I just knew how, how difficult it was. And then I knew once I made the grade that, you know, there, there wasn't going to be a, a training session that uh, that really affected me after what I'd done previously. How bad did it get, man, in terms of the needles, in terms of the body? And, you know, were there moments when you thought, I don't know if I can play this weekend? Um, yeah, I guess the needles were your, your best friend some weeks. Um you know, you'd needle up, but you were never 100%. And, you know, you'd have 13 guys around you that were the same. Um, but you, you wouldn't say a word, you know. You just you just want to get out there and it's in your blood, Hamont. Um, you know, mate, that you can't beat game day. Um, you just live for it. And, you know, you play the you play the game in your head uh, three times after the game. You go, mm. what did I do right? What did I do wrong? You know, that was... Uh, you know, you, you just loved it and you just did everything you could to get out on the field. So when when I see people uh, say that, you know, these guys don't want to be there, they don't want to play, you just think, oh, I don't think you're right there. I mean, in terms of the engine that you've got, that you were renowned for, how much of that was natural versus earned? That's a good question because, you know, when it comes to school, uh, cross country, I, I would walk the school cross country in my school shoes and... You know, I just wasn't one for, for athletics. I guess I probably wasn't the quickest kid to do the hundreds or the two hundreds and it probably until I got a ball in my hand, you know, I it, and I guess it's what do they say? It, it's game fitness, mate, match fitness mm. and then, you know, as I got older I played a few more minutes and you know, I was just fortunate that uh, my lungs uh, allowed me to do what I what I did months, you know. I, the training and always, you know, you've got the big guys around you probably make you look better than you do with conditioning. But, um, you know, it, it was easy to, you know, to get ahead of everyone and um, to try and encourage them to, to get up with you. Um, I always tried to lead and I always looked after my body to try to get the best out of it. Friendly, talk to me about uh, the different culture at the club in terms of the Island boys, uh, the, the guys that would just have fun uh, on the field and off the field as well. Yeah, once uh, I mean we we experienced everything. My family, um, we went to the Marae. You know, we just we thought, how good is this? You know, we had Matty Ruhr actually was you know in charge of us, uh, an ex player. Um, you know, and we went there and kind of got a feel of the tradition uh, when we were over there. And as you said, we're in the sheds, and you just got characters all around you. Uh, it's twenty four seven. They're just Talking Samoan, t- t- 
Silk and Mary, you know, just comes in and out their slang. Uh, you've got Simon Cutter. Uh, what have we got? Dave Fusatua. Um, he was, he said he was religious, but some of the things he, uh, he come out with, I wouldn't say <laughs> <laughs> he was too religious, but uh, just to listen to the boys. And then Jimmy Maloney would walk in and, yeah, the, the Island boys would just pull him apart. It was fantastic. A bit of slangy match. Who was more of a piss, Jimmy Maloney or, or, or name and shame? Well, not shame, but uh, call out some of these uh, warrior boys. Well, well, Conrad Harrell, you know, what you see is what you get with Connie. Uh, he's 24-7. He's always trying to pull someone's pants down or do do whatever. And then, you know, Simon Catter was, was, you know, right behind him, old Solly. Um, yeah, obviously by Tongans and, and you had the, the lousy boys. Uh, quiet on the outside, but when you get them in the sheds, uh, it's to pull people apart. We had Sammy Tompkins there for a few years, you know, he was uh, he used to spice it up a bit, he thought he had a little bit of colour in him, he was a, a white <laughs> pommy. Um, but uh, we had Jakey Lulliman, uh, you could have well, he's he's back over there, isn't he? You know, you could have swore he was an islander, but um, yeah, he was he was a great man to be around, and then you had Simon Mannering that. He would just sit in the corner and just have a chuckle. Had to keep your eyes open 24-7 around these boys. And, you know, I wasn't, because I was the Aussie, I wasn't pushed aside and you know, I was a part of their jokes. And it was it was great to be. Yeah, it was it was a good mix, Mont. Uh, mm. Really enjoyed it, you know. Footy side of things was great. Who yeah. was the, the shearer, so to speak? Who would be the guy that made sure that everyone was was in line? Well, you had a few of the Kiwi seniors, you know, Simon Mannering, hence why he was the captain, you know. He, he didn't talk much, but when he did, you know, the boys listened. It was fantastic. Tommy was good. Like, um, you know, he's hard-nosed, Tommy, and, you know, he, he's 100 miles an hour and he just wanted the best for the team. Now, he he was certainly a leader. Uh, he didn't have the seat body beside his name, but, uh, yeah, he was unbelievable. You knew if, uh, if you're in a battle, you know, you want the big man. Or the, the little man beside you. Like when Jimmy was there, you know, he used to you know, put shit on people, but he'd train hard and it, there'd be no hiding. Um, so he was always good to be around as well, uh, that aspect, Jimmy. Like 2011, it, it started to click, and I don't know if that's because Jimmy Maloney was there. I don't want to put him forward because he's a, he's a pest, but, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a competitor and, you know, everyone loved him. Uh, Ryan Hoffman, uh, you mentioned leaders. Uh, that's a leader on the field. You, you have a laugh. Why do you laugh when I say Ryan Hoffman? Because <laughs> he's he's a different individual, Ryan Hoffman. Um, love the guy a bit, but he's very intense when it comes to footy, and uh, he's very different. You know, I think he sits and just does Lego pieces for fun. You know, when his spare time and that. Well, nothing against Lego, but he's <laughs> just you know he can recite movies and. Yeah, you know, God love him, but yeah, he's he, he's certainly a competitor, and you know what he's what he did in our sport was was unbelievable. Um, yeah, he he took it. He ran hard lines. Uh, probably hurt him in the end because he took that many shots yeah. to the melon. Um, but yeah, he was good to have over in New Zealand. Um, just unfortunately, we we just didn't have the troops around him to yeah mm. get him to where we needed to be. You mentioned Maloney. Um, he's gone on to win a couple of premierships. But, you know, Chad Townsend, who got another chance to put on the colours not so long ago or, or, or last year, what about him? Did you ever think that he was going to be a, a grand final winner? Well, it's amazing, Mike. You know, he, he got his opportunity to come over to New Zealand to, to play first grade. Um, so, and, uh, you know, Chad, well, he was my training partner. And, you know, in the gym and uh, on the track, you know, he was always right beside me and, He's much like myself, you know, probably not one of the skilled, most skilled individuals, but, you know, he's a, he's a bit of the Cooper Cronk mold where, you know, he gives direction. He's, he's, he's very good uh, at, at steering the ship. And, you know, it's good to see that he had the right boys around him at, at the Sharks. And, you know, I retired in 16 and I was actually in Sydney when, when the Sharks won. So I caught up with him and you know, gave him a big cuddle, mate, and told him that, yeah, you know, I deserve half of that. <laughs> of course you do, mate. I, I love that friend, Dan. You would have made a big difference in a lot of people's careers. Uh, 242 games, uh, 86 with uh, the Warriors colours. Uh, what are some of uh, the fond memories for you in, in, in that jumper? 
I used to just love every game at Mount Smart, mate. There's, there's no better stadium to, to play footy at. You know, I just got used to the climate, mate, and the support we had, uh, all supporters there in NZ were just awesome. Didn't matter where we travelled, we had you know, thousands of supporters. And, uh, you know, it's just great to see you kind of lose that in Australia. Um, you know, even though rugby league is quite small if you compare it to Union over there, but the supporters that uh, we have made, are, you know, they're passionate and you just got to love it. I guess every every Melbourne game was was intense for some reason. I used to, used to try a little extra for that one. And, uh, you know, we'd always get packed houses for that, you know, just being such a, a close game, but a great team opposing us, you know. Um, so that was always, always one of the matches uh, that I'd look forward to. Well, Friendy, once a warrior, always a warrior. And I thank you for your time and also what Kelly and your boys did um, for the club. Um, you'll be remembered and finally for a very long time for sure. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And uh, like I've said previously, it's, it was a great uh, four years over in NZ. Uh, loved every moment of it. You know, our kids were singing the Kiwi anthem and doing the haka and there's no better way to to start someone's life off, mate. So, yeah, very blessed. And, yeah, thank yous. You're the man, friend, eh? Next week in the studio, I'll be joined by the man, the myth, the legend, that is Sir John Kerwin. Uh, get some of his stories of what it was like early on, the pressures from coming from the All Blacks uh, to the great game of rugby league. We'll see you same time, same place on Once a Warrior. Ball oh, friend takes off, and Nathan Friend... Five minutes out, Nathan Friend will score! Friend, Friend through the middle, up the middle, now he passes it! Friend quickly out of dummy half, taking good metres, Nathan Friend. As Friend is running again. I know we see extraordinary play, this may be the best ever. There's those beautiful hands and Nathan Friend is in.